morning we've got three uh, speakers. Uh, we're going to slightly change the, the, uh, the uh, order. Uh, first up, um, I'm sure there won't be too much introduction. Uh, Rufus May and two, two, one, two of his colleagues. Two colleagues. Yeah. 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 And uh, we're, they're going to kick off this morning's session. Um, one, of the, one of the themes we put on this program was about creative responses to distress. And uh, they're going to uh, demonstrate what that might look like. And I think I'll leave it there. Is that okay, Yeah, yeah, great. <coughs> so, so um, it's a privilege to be here. Um, yeah, my name is Rufus. Uh, we're going to introduce you to Andrea Aguilera, and I work with uh, Robert Jones in Boston. I'm an assistant in the Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to introduce you to Andrea Aguilera. And a couple of weeks ago, I went to a radical herbalist gathering, uh, <coughs> which sounds like what it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> But I got really kind of, there was a lot of talk about social justice there, a lot of herbalists who work with protests, and, um, and that kind of partly inspired today's 10 minute slot. So, really, I want to share with you, we want to share with you some work we're doing in Bolton inpatient uh, setting, um, and with a woman called Dan Reed, who's here in the audience, and uh, so we're going to be talking a bit about some of the uh, experiences she's been through and how we're trying to help her uh, reconnect with her emotions. She feels very numb, very cut off, and hears voices all the time telling her to kill herself. And um, she's been feeling numb for many years. And so we, we're trying different approaches. We're just going to present some of the creative approaches and some of her writing that, that's... Um, we just, I discovered through working that she writes poetry and um, we're going to read some of that as well. So, for anybody, look after yourself. So, if it gets too heavy, feel free to step out. You know, um, you're, yeah, you're the expert of what's good for you. So, um, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to read a poem that Anne Marie wrote um, that really says how she feels pretty much all the time recently. I'm feeling like shit. I feel as though I'm in an endless pit. Will it ever change? I'm struggling to get through the day. It doesn't help with what the voices say. Will it ever change? I just think it would be better if I was dead. Then I wouldn't have these thoughts in my head. Will it ever change? I wish I didn't have to endure this torture. EEPD has no cure. Will it ever change? Will I always want to die? Will I ever want... Will I ever be able to cry? Will it ever change? Will I always be detached from everyone and everything? Will I always feel like I'm just existing? Will it ever change? When I heard this poem, I thought, I felt the power of it, and also I said, don't worry about EUPD. Uh, I don't think it exists. And, uh, and we said, nor do I. <laughs> I'll never agree with that. And um, through our talks, through what she'd been through, and we experienced abuse from the age of four, by a grandfather to nine, and from two other relatives from the age of 10 to 16. And neglect as well, alongside that. What I was saying is the way you are, the way you feel, is a you know, totally understandable reaction, creative way of being with what you've had to endure. It's not a disorder. Um, we'd like to, we've only got a few minutes, so, I'd like to also read you a poem, uh, a letter. So, Leah's going to read. Uh, is there anything you want to say, Leah? Uh, no? Yeah. <laughs> um, a 
a letter to, to the Anne we wrote to our grandfather. So as part of restorative justice, really, this is an opportunity for a wider community to hear and witness what Anne Marie's been through. And Anne Marie's even took one of her abuse experiences to court, but it was invalidated and it was, it was another layer of trauma, really, the way the court case was carried out. So I felt that this is an opportunity, really, to have a different experience of people witnessing and acknowledging it, perhaps. <coughs> You hear me again uh, to ground that you've hurt me a lot and have caused me to have mental health problems. I hate you so much for what you did. I was too young to understand what you was doing was wrong. You took away my childhood beliefs at such a young age by telling me Father Christmas and Easter Bunny wasn't real. You have totally ruined my life to the point I just want to die. I can't remember everything that you did, but I have started to remember some things, and only the girl should go through that. You were supposed to love me and protect me. Instead, you used me for your own pleasure. What you did was so fucking wrong. I'm glad you're dead now. At least you won't be able to destroy someone else's life. You made out that you were such a good person to everyone else, when really, behind closed doors, you were the master. I know that you had a hard in the prisoner of Walcom, but it still doesn't excuse what you did. There are no excuses. What you did was vile. I wish I could have confronted you and asked you why. I nearly did once, but then Irene walked in, so I never I will never be able to understand how you can do that to a child, or anyone for that matter. I've tried to think from the abuser, and that's why I made excuses up for why you did it. I know deep down that I shouldn't have done it, but it was my way of coping at the time. I should be very angry with you, but the truth is, I don't feel anything. I think that it is better that you're dead, so I don't have to see you, as that used to be a constant reminder of what you did. You used to always tell me it was special, and it was our secret. Then when I got older and realized it wasn't happening to my friends and kind of knew it was wrong, you told me if I told anyone, I would get taken away from my mom and dad. I believed you. So I didn't tell anyone and had to carry that secret around with me. You used to spoil me with sweets and toys, and as I got older, you used to bribe me. If I did what you wanted, you would buy me sweets or give me money. Basically, you used me for what you wanted. I'm going to go now, as another memory has just come in my head. What you did was sick, and now I'm left dealing with it. shift the energy slightly to show another piece of work that we're doing, partly to cope with the voices. So the voices might represent distressed parts of Anne-Marie, but they also need standing up to because they're constantly telling her to kill herself. So we're not hitting the voices in this situation, but also it's really good if you've been bullied to learn that you can now defend yourself. So exercise is useful. And connecting with the body is very really important in recovery. So this is one way, it won't suit everyone. But um, can you give me a left jab? So have your have your hands up. So left to the left. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> put your guard up. That's it. Right. Left. That's it. Right. Good. Left. That's it. Keep your guard up. Keep your guard up. So if I hit you like that, you can block it. That's it. Come on. Left. Go. Good. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to say some of the things the voices say to you. So you're playing memory. Um, kill yourself. Five, four, three, kill yourself. Five, two, three. A bit louder, please. Are you okay with this? Is this all right? It's not too much? No? Okay. Kill yourself. I choose to move. Kill yourself. I have a choice. Hang yourself. I want to move. Get a rope and hang yourself. I have a choice. You're better off. You know you're better off. I choose to move. Kill yourself. I choose to live. Give up. I want to live. Right now, the right wing bleeding. Kill yourself. I choose to live. Kill your emotions. I choose the life. I. I have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> Now just, we'll just finish off with this. I'm going to just jab towards your face. I want you to fend it away, but not too much, okay? So that's it. So just jab, that's it. So just, you can do the same to me, try and hit my face. Properly. <laughs> this is your shot. <laughs> Anyone that you've got some resentment for, hit them, knock them out. Put your whole body into it. Yes. Okay. Great. Questions. Is it all right if you just talk to the person next to you about how you feel hearing this? Is that okay? <laughs> <Just saying. laughs>